Hello. Today I want to show how we can use OEM analysis to look at the texture or the preferred orientation of different materials. To start, I've loaded three different data sets. I'm going to start with a file from a rolled aluminum sample. And I'm going to create our IPF, inverse pole figure orientation map. And here each pixel is colored according to this colored stereographic triangle to show the orientation relative to the surface normal direction. Now I can visualize this using our flexi view option and I can add a unit cell. So as I move my cursor to different grains, I see how the orientation changes. I can add a second flexi view panel looking at the pole figure. So the pole figure shows the projection of the different uh, poles from different planes onto a 2D projection of a sphere. So that's what we see here with the 001 pole figure. And each uh, face of the uh, crystal is projecting. So if we look down here, this grain would be the point in the bottom uh, right of the pole figure. The other face is in the bottom left. And then the top face is pointing kind of the top line aligned in the middle. And as we look at different grains, we see how those poles move. And for each point, we see uh, different poles, the number of which are dependent on the crystallographic symmetry of the crystal. So here we're looking at a cube. So we're seeing three faces of the cube from the 001 pole. Um, there are three negative hemisphere ones available as well. If I right click on here and go to properties and say, show points in the negative hemisphere and use open circles to display those, you'll see how the poles, the planes um, facing away from the displayed crystal are now projected in the opposite direction. So that's how we can use a pole figure to see these particular orientations. Uh, but generally, we don't look at these one at a time. We can look with what's called a, a pole figure. So I'm going to click here on our quick pole figure to look at our default 001 pole figure. We can put those next to each other. So here, each pixel from the orientation map is plotted in this uh, 001 pole, uh, pole figure. And so we can see there's some clustering involved here. But when we look at uh, a discrete pole figure, like shown here, we never know if one point represents a single point or if one point has, you know, a hundred different measurements on top of it. So what we like to do is do some uh, analysis to see how strong this preferred orientation or this texture is. And we can do that by right clicking here and saying, let's create a new texture. You can see here by default, we're going to create three different pole figures. The 001 we've looked at, but we can also look for the 111 and 110 poles. Uh, it's also going to create some inverse pole figures by default. Um, when we do the calculation, our default's using a harmonic series expansion. There are other ways we can do this, um, but this is the, the, the default method. We'll click OK. And what it's doing here is for this orientation distribution, it's calculating a, uh, and matching a function to describe this distribution. And so when we do this and we plot this texture plot, and we will just look at the, um, the pole figures, we see a, a density representation of that distribution. If we put these next to each other, I'll close the map and tile these next to each other. We can see how the peaks here in the 001 pole figure correspond to areas of high intensity. And if we look down here, we'll see a scale bar give us an idea of the strength of this preferred orientation or texture. So the maximum value it finds is 13 times random is what the scale is in. And so if you imagine if, if orientations were randomly distributed everywhere, the times random value would be one. So when we see this above one, it indicates there is a certain preferred orientation as we'd expect for a rolled aluminum. As I move my cursor around, you'll see in the bottom, it tells the times random values for different peaks in here. So that peak is approximately 10 times random. The blue areas will be closer to zero times random. And so this gives us an idea of, of how uh, strong a texture is, how it's distributed spatially. Um, one of the features we're able to do, because this is a rolled material, is I can come in here to my calculations. We can do things like apply sample symmetry. So right now, there's no symmetry applied. But because we're looking at a rolled sheet, we can apply symmetry to this. And basically, it applies the, the symmetrically equivalent um, orientations to the calculation. And then we get a really nice pull figure of something that would be comparable to what we'd see with XRD data. And we can do that for both the, um, the discrete and the, um, 
the density pull figures. Here it is right here. Sorry. <laughs> I knew it was there. And so now we'll see it. We can see how those now compare to one another. So this shows kind of both discrete and density pull figures and how it can, can create um, representations of both. This can also be plotted uh, as a contour plot as well. Or we can use the full color density plot. Both of those are fine. Now I'm going to go to the next film here which instead of being a rolled material is going to have a single uh, color facing out at us. What that means is that if we, again, if we look at our flexive view and we'll look at our unit cell and our pull figure, the, the crystals are all pointing with a blue color, which means it's one, one, one. So you can see that the point of the crystal is generally always pointing out of the surface. I can right click here and say, instead of the O one, let's look at the one, one, one. Orientation, now we'll see that center one is always near the center of the measurement. Well, that's why those are all um, blue. But we look at the, the outer spokes, which are the other 111 poles for that orientation, there are four coming out at us, are sort of radially distributed around the, the center. So we can see this with a pole figure. Again, I'll create a quick pole figure here. And we see that that creates sort of an, an annular distribution. And I'll change this again to the 111 pull figure and we can see what's described as a fiber texture so again the surface normal and the normal is what's aligned in the center of this pull figure is nearly all in the center but there's this distribution radially around where there's a, a freedom uh, that it can be distributed randomly around that so it, it's fixed in the center and free to rotate around there and again if we look at the same thing and we calculate a texture here in this case, I do not want to have the rolled sheet on. I don't want to have axial. I want to go to none. And we calculate our texture for this. We will see that it's a pretty you know, consistent fiber texture. It's pretty even in terms of density along there, but it's stronger in the center because all the orientations are in this direction, weaker in here because it's there's fewer orientations in each point. Um, and that's what we call a fiber texture. The third thing I want to show that's kind of interesting about fiber textures is this is now going from an aluminum film to a copper film. And we look at the orientations and it's, it's similar in that there's still a lot of blue, but there are also some, some reddish grains here. And so if we look at the pole figure, we'll see a similar type of a, of a, of a fiber texture. But if I look at this, modify this to the 111 again, we see here that there's some different concentric rings around here. And to make this a little easier to see, I'm going to edit this and just say I'm going to go to one size larger of poles, of pixels. So they're a little larger. And one thing we can do if I put these next to each other, I can come in and say, let's pick different uh, grains. And I'm going to start with a blue grain for the ones that look blue. I'm going to click one here, it's going to find the grain, and then it's going to apply the color. And you can see that the blue here is in the center. We see where the equivalents are through here. So if I click a few of these, it should start filling in that fiber texture a little bit. I can do a range of orientations to make it a little larger. And we can see how we start to describe that. And then what we can see are these, these other rings. So I can pick another color. I'm going to go to the, the more of a red color. And I'm going to come pick here ones that are pinkish red to see where that lines up here. And you can see that starts to fill in some of these other rings. So rather than doing this manually, I can clear the colors and say, apply the colors here as a highlight. And we can see the representation of this onto the pull figure to see that the, the blue fiber texture here is present here, but there are these other rings here that show up as the, the pink colors. And those actually correspond to um, twins of the original 111 orientation. So we have a twin and then a twin of a twin. So first and second order twins that show up when we can visualize this pull figure. 
So this video shows a few different things we can do to uh, visualize texture via pull figures, uh, do some interactive work, do some highlighting work, and quantify the strength of a texture using um, the harmonic series expansion calculation of, of the, um, the orientation distribution function.